Hey guys, welcome to the Follow Me Request. Let's start with bronchial asthma. Asthma is a disease of airways that is characterized by increased responsiveness of the tracheobronchial tree to a variety of stimuli. The Greek meaning of asthma is difficulty in breathing. It occurs due to type 1 hypersensitivity. There is a widespread spasmodic narrowing of the air passage. It can be relieved spontaneously or by therapy. It can be triggered by environmental allergens like dust particles or any pollen grain etc. Let's see the difference between a normal bronchial tube and inflamed bronchial tube that is asthmatic. In normal bronchial tube, the smooth muscles are relaxed. When a legend goes inside, there is no such difference created. It is normal. In inflamed asthmatic bronchial tube, smooth muscles get tightened. Swelling occurs in the lumen. When the allergen goes inside, mucus gets filled inside the lumen, which creates the difficulty in breathing. So, now let's see the management of drugs for asthma. We use the word management because asthma cannot be treated properly it can only be managed it is a genetic disorder or it can be acquired many times so the classification for the drugs or the classification of the drugs for management of asthma are bronchodilators leukotriene agonist leukotriene antagonist mast cell stabilizers glucocorticoids anti-IgE antibody bronchodilators are of three types beta 2 agonist methyl xanthines anticholinergics beta 2 agonists are uh, salbutamol terbutaline they are used in the acute attack of asthma they are shorter acting drugs which can be used for a short time period Salmuterol and phenoterol are the drugs of slow onset that cannot be used during the acute attack. They are longer acting drugs. Adrenaline is also a beta agonist used during the asthmatic attack. It is used in non-responding cases. It releases it decreases the release of mediators. Next is methyl xanthines. It is not considered to be safe. It inhibits phosphodiesterin and increases the cyclic AMP which decreases the relaxation of mediators, improves mucociliary clearance, competitive antagonist of adenosine. It cannot be considered safe because it, can, it causes tachycardia palpitations and GI irritations. It decreases the depresses the cardiac muscles which in turn causes tachycardia. It also crosses the blood brain barrier and placenta. Anticholinergics Anticholinergics are the iprotropium bromide and tyropium. They blocks M3 receptors which are responsible for bronchospasm. Safer than beta 2 agonist they can be taken via inhalation for acute attack combined with beta 2 antagonist and the onset is slow. Next is leukotriene antagonist. The example of leukotriene antagonist are Montelocast, Jeferlocast. They competitively block leukotriene receptors on bronchial smooth muscles causing dilation. They also inhibit lipoxenase enzyme which causes formation of LTC4 and LTD4 that is leukotriene C4 and leukotriene D4. They can be used for acute and moderate asthma. Jephilocast can cause skin rashes that's why it is taken in very less amount. Mast cell stabilizers. Mast cell stabilizers are the disodium chromoglycate and ketophyin. They inhibit the release of mediators. They once it is slow, they stabilizes the mast cell membrane and do not allow the release of mediators. Disodium glycerate, disodium chromoglycate by inhalation can be taken by inhalation, but it triggers the asthma attack. That's why it is 
not considered in many cases used in seasonal allergies hay fever etc next are the glucocorticoids they can be of two types inhalation and systematic this inhalation decreases side effects and systematic increases side effects they inhibit phosphodiesterase a2 inhibits prostaglandins thromboxin a2 slow reacting substances of amphylaxis they are anti allergic anti inflammatory immunosuppressant leading to decreased bronchial hyperactivity and edema they can be used for the long term use and the side effects are candidiasis or hoarseness or hardening of voice etc the systematic glucocorticoids can be used only in the severe cases next is the anti ige antibody they are the monoclonal antibodies that are antibodies against antibody the example of anti ige antibody is omelizumab they neutralize ige antibody in the body and prevents degeneration of mast cells the side effects includes redness stinging and itching of the bodies thank you that's it